As quilters, there are tools that we love to use. There are tools that we absolutely have to have. They're a necessity. And you know what I'm talking about, the cutting mat, the rulers, the rotary cutters. But what I'm here to talk about today are rotary cutter blades. Oh my goodness, there's so many to choose from. How do you know which to go with? Well, I'm going to tell you what my favorite blade is. I'm Leah Louise from Inspired Quilting by Leah Louise. And you may recall my video last year that I did when the Fabric Hut gave me a sample of their cutting blades. They're a titanium blade that fit all standard rotary cutters, and I absolutely loved them, and I recommended them to you, and there was a great price to buy them. Well, I'm going to do a comparison again. I want to compare how this blade is held up over the course of a year. Is it still my favorite? Are there some others out there that are better? Well, we're going to find out, but I'm going to give you a hint. There is a fantastic price for my favorite rotary blade down below in the description, so don't miss it. Come on, let's go. I want to show you this. I started pulling all my cutting utensils, and it was kind of funny to see how many I have and for what different purposes. Um, it's, it's just interesting to see the progression of what we've come through. This is the oldest pair I have. I know they're at least from the 50s. It might They might even be older than that. They were my grandmother's, might have been my great-grandmother as well. They certainly look like they've been around that long. They're worn, but they're pinking shears. And I grew up with these, a pair of these in the house with my mom when we used to sew together in the sewing room. And this was always great when we used to make clothing that had lining. And, you know, I used to make blazers and all those kinds of things. And the lining could be, it, it was like not a rayon and acetate. I don't know what the fabrics were in those days, but they raveled. And so you would cut those edges. When you're cutting out your pattern, you would use this. And it kept the fabric from raveling on you. And this is not unlike what was used today when pre-cuts are, are cut and packaged. And they use a blade not dissimilar to this, but it's on a big machine. No one uses little hand cutters like this to cut all those pre-cuts. But the idea and the method is still the same. And this is something that works really well. If you have a problem with raveling fabric, depending on what you sew on, these are really good to have. Then we have our shears, and they've always been called dressmaker shears when you get the long, I think it's called an eight inch blade from here to here. And the ones I buy are gingers. If I need a pair of utilities, I'll get fiskers because they work and they're fine, but they're not super sharp and they can't be resharpened. These are incredibly hard metal. I don't know if it's all steel or a composite, but they can be sharpened and they just last forever. And, you know, this is the standard pair that I've had and you can just see or not even see, but hear that they're, they're very loose and well used and broken in. And these are just the pretty ones. Every once in a while, um, they come out with a new series in different colors and I couldn't pass up the pretty turquoise. Now I like to have, this is what I use when I'm working with big pieces of fabric. And this is what I have right by my sewing machine because they're shorter, they're more manageable, they're lighter weight, and they're good to have if you need to do some cutting um, beyond just a little snip or two. Now this is an interesting pair. And they're spring-loaded, so it has this little locking mechanism, and I can go ahead and cut, and then when I let go, see how it pops back? I bought these thinking they would be great for uh, rag quilting, but they, they work for a bit, but there's a better tool for this, and I'll show you that, for rag quilting anyways. But this is great if you have... Um, you know, achy hands or arthritis or your hands get tired. This is a great way if you do a lot of cutting so your hands don't get tired. That spring, instead of when you're using scissors like this, you lift them up with your thumb, you cut down and then it stays there. You have to lift it with your thumb. So that thumb gets tired. 
When this is down and you let go, it just pops right back up. So you keep your thumb in there so you can manage control, but you're not pulling with it, and that really helps. So that's kind of the, the brief outline of what my, my basic cutting tools are in general. Now, this is something I grew up with next to the sewing machine. My mom bought these. This is a new pair, obviously, but she bought a pair of these, and it took me a few times of using to get the hang of it. But my goodness, when I'm at the sewing machine and I'm just, you know, cutting threads, I did some chain piecing and I need to cut everything apart. This is so simple. Um, I like buying something like this that has multiple purposes than buying a tool that does one thing, which is why I don't have that little stand-up guy that you run your thread through and cut it like this. Um, I just use this and it's so much quicker and I can use it for other things. It's perfect for cutting threads close to the fabric, um, you know, a lot of different things. So I really like these. Another thing I have to share, I don't have a utensil to actually show you, but there was a time when we had electric scissors or shears. I'm not sure exactly what they were called, but the handle was not unlike um, the electric clippers today that they use in a barber shop. And on the end of it, so you had, I'm sure it had a cord and not batteries, but on the cutting end, it had two blades, not unlike this and not much bigger than this. And they would just go really fast like this and you'd cut through your fabric. I don't know how effective they were. I don't really remember using them much um, or seeing them that often around the house. So I think we've got them and uh, that was that, tried them and moved on and stuck with the, uh, the good old guys that we used for years and, and work really well. Now, the other thing that's a new modern technique, uh, a, a modern tool, I should say, is the seam ripper. And I don't know when these were introduced, but they are really handy and they work great for ripping out your seams. But remember, these do get dull in this little cutting area. So you want to make sure that you repair them from time to time. Before these came out, this is what we used. And this is what I grew up with learning how to sew and cutting threads and ripping out seams. Now it's, it's a single edge blade and probably not the safest thing in the world to use, I'm sure. These definitely are more ergonomic, they're more comfortable, and you don't have to worry so much about leaving this out because you've got the nice little cover and it's not going to hurt anybody. Um, many of you that have quilted for a long, long time may remember this because I know this is what a lot of folks used. Now, another thing that we come to is rag quilting, and that's why I have these snippers. What I love about these is that they have a spring. So I go ahead and I unlock my little gripper there. I actually hold it this way. And the spring, not unlike these scissors, when I cut with them, they bounce back. And so it's so much easier on my thumb. I do a lot of rag quilting and when I am cutting, my thumb can get really tired. So once I found these with this spring, oh my goodness, and the spring comes out. So, you know, there's nothing um, difficult that you need to repair or maintain. The uh, spring goes in and out and it has this nifty little clasp that you can keep it closed with. Now, you can buy these in a number of different ways. I've had them where they kind of come like this and the handle comes up like that. That didn't work for me. I just, I didn't like that method. I like this straight inline handle. Now, some of them come with just straight handles, but I like this ergonomic where my finger kind of fits into that notch so it doesn't slide up and down, it stays put. And these are something that I use a lot of. And this was a brand, this was made by Genome, but they no longer make these. There's another brand out there and they're the exact same thing. And they're actually a little cheaper than what these used to be. And so I'll put some links for all these down below if there's anything that you'd like. But my big topic today is going to be about rotary blades and rotary cutters in general and what works and what I like and 
and why and the differences and the pros and cons. And I want to share with you what I use, why I use it, how well they do or don't work, and what my preferences are. Now we'll start with elimination. These are Fiskars, they're great, and they're better for crafting than sewing. I don't like the the way this, this holds. There's no protector here for my thumb. So if I'm pressing on heavy fabric and my thumb slips, there's really not much to stop me from getting caught up in the blade. So I prefer to use this for craft purposes, cutting paper or cardboard or cardstock, whatever the case may be. Um, anything that you don't want to dull your good blades on, you want to use something like this. So I'm going to set that aside because I don't use this for my sewing, for my fabrics. When I cut my fabric, I want a nice clean cut and I don't want to have to recut back and forth because a blade is skipping or isn't sharp enough because then my cuts are not going to be nice and smooth and even. So this brings me to these two. This simply is an older model and the part about this that is beneficial, again, it's got a better handle and it has the grip right here for your thumb so that as you're holding this, your thumb is not as apt to slide. Down here on the smooth, your thumb goes back and forth. Here, you have to really push so that as you're sewing, it not only curves upward, but it's stopping your thumb in place. So you're less apt to get, you know, your thumb caught in the blade and, and get cut. Now, the biggest deterrent for me on this is replacing the blade and it's because it has parts and I have the, the little thumb screw, the th thumb nut I guess we call it, plus a little washer and I can't tell you how many times I have to look up on the directions how this works. It wasn't until I found out, you see that little rectangle cut in there? Well that fits around the rectangle of this screw right here, this piece that holds everything together. Do you, can you tell that that's a rectangle in there? And so this little guy has to fit on just right. And you know, it, it took me, <laughs> I can't even tell you how long, uh, to figure that part out. And then of course we have the blade. Now this blade, I, I left both of these in because it's time to replace them. And I'm not going to be using them anymore. And when I have blades that I'm throwing away, I don't like just throwing them in the trash because, whoops, that didn't work. If somebody is, you know, going through the trash or a bag breaks and someone's picking up trash that spilled, I don't want them to get cut. So I put it in a, a piece of uh, wide tape and usually the tape tears off far better than this. Sorry about that. There we go. And I just put it so that the blade is completely encased and I wrap the edges around. So the chances of somebody getting cut are pretty darn minimal. There we go. We can put that right over the top like this. Okay. Not my prettiest packaging, but it does the trick. So that's a good way to throw it away. I don't know how it'll get dealt with at some point on the other end, but at least no one's going to get hurt. This is my favorite rotary cutter. The handle is a bit stockier and better to grip and you can see it's more ergonomic. Instead of being this straight piece, it has a nice curve to it and your hand fits around it well. And the best part is this. I like that I can just pull my blade protector back and I can cut. It just works really well and it's smooth and there's no resistance. It works great. So not only do I have this thumb protector here, this guard to stop my thumb from sliding, there's also a guard around the blade. See, this doesn't have that. And so as we, we get into more people using them and suggestions being made, these are getting better and safer all the time. I've never cut myself. And I don't want to, so I always buy, buy the safest ones. And if you're careful, chances are you're not going to have a problem. The biggest 
time when you may cut yourself is when you're changing the blade and you just have to be very very cautious so this goes back and forth but what I want to show you is how easy this is to change the blade this button just like this one is what holds the blade on right there like that but what you do instead of all these little doodads you just pull this back and now you're going to push this through the button lifts out and the blade comes out and it's just that easy I love that it's that easy because it doesn't take uh, what do I want to say? I don't have to fuss with it and potentially get my fingers in there trying to release the blade and get it where I want it. And I just have to be careful lifting that up. And I put it right here inside my tape and just seal that baby up and it's good to go. So that's that. That's taking the blades out and how I dispose of them. Now what I want to show you is what we're going to use for blades. But what I do want to show you is my preference and why I think it's the best blade you can get. For years I used the Endurance Blade by Ulfa and it's a very good blade and it worked well for me and it lasts probably longer than many of the other blades that are on the market because it has the extra, um, what do I want to say, extra protective coating and I really liked it and it says it lasts twice as long and I would I would agree that that definitely does but they're expensive they can be anywhere from 15 to 20 dollars a piece so the problem with that is you pay a lot of money for this really super you know sharp blade but you don't want to change it often because it's really expensive and it, it costs a lot to switch your blades out so what I'm going to do is just take this blade. Now, sometimes there may be a little bit of oil. I don't see any on this, and um, it just could be that this doesn't do that. But I'm going to go ahead and let's see. I need to put the blade on first, get myself in the right, the right direction. Okay, now I need to get my little guy on and I have to get him just lined up like that and I put the thumb screw when I put the uh, little screw on I put the flat end down because this part it's it's sort of concave it it um, kind of curves down in and so I just that way the flat part of the the nut the screw that's holding everything fits against that washer and so there we are. So we have a nice, nice blade and it's smooth and it's nice and new. I always save these. And this is another way you can throw the blade away too, I suppose. But, um, oh well, you know, whatever works for you. I still like the tape because if this pops open, it's going to fall out. Now, when you open your blade and you replace it, you definitely want to clean out the lint. One thing you want to check is right down in these little grooves if you don't change a blade for a long time you can get lint build up in here and you'll find that it's hard to move this back and forth and that the lint will cause that blade to slow down because there's there's pressure against the blade and it won't roll as smoothly so always check to make sure that that's clean i have a little tiny bit of lint right there but it's overall this is in pretty good shape now here's what i want to talk to you about a year ago i did a um a test run with the fabric huts titanium blades and you can see it's been well used and these blades at the time I, I first tried them I was very impressed it worked great and it definitely worked better than the other blades I was I was using so I'm just going to spread these out so I can get one and put the rest back now these come in a 10 pack and I have four five six of them left so I'm using number seven I mean, in a year I've used three blades. That's really hard for me to believe <laughs> because I cut a lot. 
but I also I do change my blades when they get dull and I'm telling you these blades last such a long time I'm wiping my fingers because when they're packaged in a group like this and they're stacked you want to have a bit of oil between them so you can easily separate them but it also keeps the blade from rusting so I just take a paper towel and rub it over just to remove any oil it's not oil that's going to affect your fabric it's not going to leave a residue you look you don't really see anything even on the paper towel it's just going to um, you know keep things nice and tidy and in well working order so I'm going to just slip my little little doodad in whoops do it the right way I always go from the back side slip this guy right through there and I don't even have to do any of this right here I just slide this forward now both of these are Ulfa cutters and obviously they've come a long ways and now they're in every color imaginable so you can check out the link they do have some really pretty pretty ones um, this was just the first one I saw that had this quick release so I bought it now what I like about this like I said are the guards they you know even if I were to run my finger like this I'm not going to get cut because that guard is just enough above the blade that I can't cut myself whereas here that blade is exposed there's a just the littlest bit of a lip but it's still possible over on these sides so you just you just have to be careful um, when you're picking out your tools and finding what works best for you and what's going to be the safest and if you leave your things out on a table like I do I don't have small kids in the house I don't have to worry about it but I don't want someone to come rummaging looking for maybe the painters tape that I was using and pick up something that they might cut themselves with so that's that's the idea behind rotary blades and what we're going to do is talk about how they work and I'll tell you what let's just do this so you can see which is which I'm going to cut some fabric with these and we're going to see as far as the um, layers of fabric how they cut and how much they'll cut and how well they hold up because for me I need a nice smooth cut when I'm using a rotary blade and doing multiple layers of fabric I use lots of fat quarters and a lot of times what I will do is cut through a lot of layers at one time sometimes eight is very common and as many as 10 or 12 depending on what I'm working on and then of course there's the denim that I use for rag quilts and the flannel so I do a lot of cutting and I'm particular about what I want to use now we're going to test out our blades and and see what the results are and how well they work I've got my fabric hut titanium blade here titanium coated blade and over here I have the Ulfa endurance blade and like I said I've used them both and they work great I just want to see which one can do a better job with multiple layers of fabric all right so eight layers let's see how we do I'm just going to cut a uh, little bit off the edge here actually no let's go like this that way I'll have some extra pieces to work with and I'm not pushing particularly hard I'm just you know regular pressure like I ordinarily would when I'm cutting oh now see that one didn't cut all the way through and and but see here where I'm getting the little threads and that's going to cause raveling and when we're sewing we have a lot of layers of fabric and we handle our fabric frequently and we cut them we sew them we cut them we trim them we cut them we press them so the more we handle it the more it's going to ravel we don't want it to start raveling at the point when we're cutting it so that's eight layers and we're getting some ravels and this is my fabric cut blade and it went all the way through and it did beautiful and look at everything is nice and straight and clean nice clean cuts all the way through so that's a great uh, a great representation right there for me I can definitely see the difference 
with these blades in terms of fabric layers. So I can use a minimal amount of pressure. I don't have to push hard with either of them, but this one doesn't quite go through the same amount of fabric. So you need to think about how important it is to get through multiple layers of fabric. And for me, it really, really is. That's kind of a critical point to me. Now, the other thing is while this one is great to use and it's going to do a good job for you, it's expensive. And this is the endurance. This isn't even the everyday, you know, utility uh, Ulfa blade. This is the, the endurance, the super duper, like I said, 15 to $20 blade. And I'm not going to pay for that for frequent use of a blade or for frequent, what do I want to say, replacement of a blade. And in the beginning, that's why I chose the fabric cut blade. And this again reaffirms to me that that was the right decision because it cuts great it's consistent. I don't get fraying. I get nice smooth cuts and the price is fantastic. The fabric hut has given us a great deal. So if you quilt a lot, if you sew a lot, if you cut a lot and you go through blades, this is going to work perfectly. If you use layers and you do rag quilting and you have a lot of quilt sandwiches you need to work through, this is going to be a blade for you. So I do recommend this. This is still my my favorite. Even after a year, I don't have any qualms about using it and I don't have any qualms about recommending it to you. Again, a good blade, no complaints for just average cutting. But if you need some serious cutting and you don't want to have to change your blade frequently, this is the one I think you're going to enjoy the best. So I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. I'm really excited to share this with you. And the discounted link that you need to get the sale price on this is down in the description. So don't miss that. I appreciate y'all being here and watching this. And I always enjoy having you here. It's my pleasure to share my quilting with you and whatever it is I'm working on. And it's such a great joy to me. Thank you for following along and have a fantastic day.